Well, the ABC has released a six-month-long report looking at the way the public broadcaster handles complaints. You wonder why it would take six months. Now, you might not be surprised to hear that the majority of complaints the ABC received during the period of June related to balance, bias and accuracy. Uh, there was almost 2,000 written complaints relating to King Charles' coronation coverage. Well, we've said enough about that, haven't we? I mean, that was disgraceful, the way that was handled. And you can see why. Have a look at what their coronation broadcast actually looked like. That they were at the heart of the dispossession of the stolen land of our First Nations people and of massacres and attempted genocide in this country and others. That's really important. The Australia with an Indigenous heritage, a British foundation and the migrant richness of the migrant experience is a lovely idea. I don't know where that Australia is. We haven't lived in that Australia. You know, they talk about genocide. You know, they talk about crimes against humanity, which they are now recognised as. But this may well be the start of a different Australia. That wasn't a debate on The Voice. That was the, the coronation of King Charles. Can you believe it? Now, the ABC ombudsman, Fiona Cameron, released the report, had this to say after it was released. If you're talking about a diversity of opinions and you just, or you just provide one opinion, you're not doing what you should be doing and it's not fair and reasonable. I think it's fair to say that the ABC has been a bit defensive. Um, I, need, I think they need to shake that off and um, they need to understand that audiences um, actually appreciate when the ABC say, hey, we got that wrong or hey, we can do better and we clarify here or we'll correct here or we'll apologise there. Joining me in the Man Cave now is former ABC chairman Maurice Newman. Maurice, in the three years leading up to 2022, I think, the ABC Ombudsman's report showed they averaged almost 24,000 complaints per year. And during a six-month period to June this year, they were over 11,000 complaints, 45% related to bias. And are you surprised? No. <clears throat> no, I think what the Ombudsman, Ombudsman's report... Uh, tells us is exactly what we've been saying all along. Uh, there's no accountability. They just go on uh, uh, regardless of any of the complaints. I think there was something, what, 8% of the complaints were up, upheld. But uh, I mean, we've had the a situation in WA just the other day. Uh, they've subsequently been shown to have lied. They came up with a report on Friday at 4.30 4 uh, saying that, oh, what we'd said previously about no collusion, well, yep. you know, maybe that wasn't quite accurate and it just goes on and on. Uh, we've had the same with that uh, town hall meeting that was held in Alice Springs uh, where we were told this was a meeting of white supremacists. When they were challenged and told that there might be an external investigation, they said, oh, well, perhaps it was selective uh, reporting. And it goes on. I could re recount another dozen examples. How disappointed are you with that? Well, I think we should all be disappointed because essentially what the ABC is saying to us, the public, forget taxpayers, the public, we're, ex we're entitled to better. Uh, there was, I'll give you another example of, of the way in which they are just totally unaccountable. There was a Four Corners program, Fox and the Big Lie. Yes. Two-part, three-part series, I think. Two, oh, two or Ferguson. three part series. Yeah. The uh, Australia Communications Media Authority found that they had breached their code of conduct on fairness and uh, honest reporting. So notwithstanding that, they showed it again. So again, I I'm saying it, it's totally shameless. They listen to no one. They're accountable to nobody. They, they put their finger up to the public, to the minister, to the parliament, to taxpayers, to all of us. And they're clearly broadcasting to a narrower and narrower group of people. Um, you wonder how it get, got to this. I mean, you and I are old enough to remember, you know, I grew up in the, the late 50s, early 60s and 70s and went into journalism in, in the early 70s, 80s. I cannot remember as a, a teenager and then a young man thinking the ABC is biased. Yeah. I never thought that. I, yeah. it, it was the national broadcaster, both on radio and on television, that you trusted the trust's gone. It's gone. And with the trust leaving, so is the audience. You can see that uh, their audiences... Especially in radio. Yeah. And uh, people aren't stupid. Now, they'll always be rusted on. They'll be the nostalgic people. They'll be the people who are activists or uh, of that ilk, inner-city cafe, cafe dwellers, I call them. Uh, it's inevitable that uh, there will be a, a core of people who will still support them. 
But you can't justify $1.1 billion being spent on such a Is narrow... it fixable? No. I believe... The culture can't be fixed. I don't believe so. I mean, I would, I've been there. Uh, I understand how it works. I asked them to be more curious. I asked them to be more balanced. Uh, for that, I was pretty much ostracised. Uh, they knew they could wait me out. We had a few sort of committees and looked into all this and that, but uh, nothing has changed. If anything, it's got worse. And as I say, I think it's, it's, they, they're totally shameless and accountable to no one. There needs to be a Royal Commission and someone should hold them to account. Well, let's hope that it comes to that, but I don't think it's going to come to that under this Labor government somehow. Thank you very much for coming in and joining us on this Wednesday night. Thank Appreciate you very it. much, Steve. Rhys Newman, thank you very much, as I said, for joining us.